Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Just one verse. In that passage, you'll find these words. It says, Joshua 6, verse number 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. I now want you to reach out and catch your neighbor by the hand. I want you to repeat these simple words after me. Just, just one word, really. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Shout. shout. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, neighbor. Shout. shout. Look at one more person and say, neighbor, neighbor. Shout. shout. Give him praise and glory. You may be seated if you can in the presence of the Lord. It might not be cool, but shout. It may be something that you've never done before, but you're about to get something you've never had before. So show in Jesus' name. Today we are here to celebrate. To celebrate by definition means to observe a notable occasion with festivities. We celebrate weddings and anniversaries, achievements and and championships. We celebrate um, uh, salvation and baptisms, elections, promotions, graduations, just to name a, a few. Sometimes things move quickly. Other times it seems like things are moving at a snail's pace, but it's okay. We've learned to be diligent and dedicated. We have learned, am I talking to someone here? We have learned to work hard and smart. Now, the longer I live, the more I realize in most cases it takes both hard and smart to win consistently. In our society, people will often tell you to work smart, not hard. I might have even done that myself. But, but I realize the information usually comes from someone who innately or naturally is doing what he or she is doing. I, I do things so naturally that, that in my mind, I think everybody should do it. And, and so I, I fail to realize how hard I really work, even though as the years roll on, I'm doing things in a much smarter way. But I still work hard. Somebody say hard. So, so people that tell you to work smart, not hard, they either have innate qualities or it comes from someone uh, that's not doing much of anything at all. Too often, it's the latter. Many people want you to be like them rather than to receive awards, the compliments, the honors, the praises that they used to receive, or in some cases, the awards, the compliments, and the honors and praises that maybe, maybe, maybe they never received. I want you to be just like, just like me. Let's just be mundane. Remember to win consistently. You must consistently, somebody say consistently, consistently work hard and smart. Along with this hard, smart work, we have to also pray. We have to study. We have to plan. We have to collaborate and then implement the purposes of life as we celebrate the sovereignty or the supreme power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am telling you right now, I know you're sharp and I know you're a baller, but I am telling you, you will never, ever outgrow God. You can try to ignore him, act like you don't need him, but God would never create a species in which he himself is not needed. Brothers and sisters, we never doubt, we never quit, we never give up because we know that we are blessed with success. I'm not just blessed to be successful, I have success all in me and running through me for the glory of the God who has called me and commissioned me. Am I the only one in here? Turn to somebody and say, I'm blessed with success. Now, the formula is powerful, but it's, it's simple. We celebrate because number one, we know God and we honor God. Amen. We know God and honor God. That's one of the primary reasons that we, that we celebrate. The more we know the word of God, the more we know the heart of God, the will of God, we also begin to understand the, the way of God. See, real and lasting success is more than just what you know. It's also who you know. Do you realize that when our current president, Barack Obama, when he went to Harvard, he didn't just go to Harvard for what he could learn. He also went to Harvard for who he could connect with. Now get this. With God, we get the best of both worlds. With him, we get the benefits of the what and the who. 
Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs 1, 7 says this. The fear or reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I can't even act like I'm smart until I get to the place where I understand God and I reverence God and I, I fear God and I know he's my, my source and my provider. I, I can't even act like I'm smart. I don't want to tell you what you are, but, but let me. That's why it's imperative that we study the word of God so that we can know him as completely and as innately as possible. Simply because there is no success that surpasses the success of God. As we've shared before, the word success, the word success is mentioned only once in the entire Bible. And it comes directly from the mouth of God. You would think the Bible would be loaded with it, but just one time. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Joshua 1 8, you will find these words. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you might observe to, to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Good, only one time in the whole Bible. If you read the Bible and you do what the Bible tells you to do, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. God tells Joshua, make sure you can walk before you start talking. Are you with me? Now, the same message that God gave Joshua in that day, he gives to us in, in this day. God says, when you know me and honor me, I will empower you to become a successful representative for me. I am telling you right now, stop trying to fit in. Try, stop trying to be like other folks. You're different. You've always been different. You are unique. You've always been unique. You are a special vessel created by God for the purpose of God. So be who God created you to be. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be scared. Some of us are scared that if we act like God, we're not going to have any friends. I am telling you right now, until you act like God, you will never have real friends. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Many basketball fans know Stephen Curry, also known as Steph Curry, the starting point guard for the Golden State Warriors. Now even though I'm going for that team, I'm not going to mention it today. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but Steph Curry is a very unique vessel. He's confident, but he's not cocky. He will compete with you, and he will beat you, but he will never insult you. He's got a baby face. He's six feet, three inches tall, and he weighs 185 pounds. Now, I know some of you are thinking, that doesn't sound like much of a basketball player. And for the most part, it doesn't. But God. But God, he does not ignore the fact that he is a devout Christian. I heard Iguodala say, you know, our whole team is full of believers. We have chapel before we hit the floor. And this is what Iguodala said. When I grow up, I want to be just like Steph. Here he is towering over Steph, muscular. But he says he's got something that I'm still trying to get. You may have noticed each time Steph Curry does something out of the ordinary, he points to the sky. Have you noticed that? Points to the sky. It was a practice he began at Davidson Christian College at his mother's suggestion. As an outward sign, an interior reminder that God gets all the glory for his success. An outward sign, but an interior reminder that anything and everything I do, I do it because he equips me to do it. In essence, in essence when, whenever you do something special, you know, God should be glorified. God should be, should be honored. And so Steph says, the abilities that I have that most folks cannot understand, nor can I, it belongs to the Lord. It belongs, it belongs to the Lord. It's very interesting. He won an NBA championship and is now playing for a second one. So you see him on the court, he goes, are you with me? He 
has won the most valuable player award for two straight years and is the only player in NBA history to win all 131 first place votes as the most valuable player for 2016. You're all not listening to me. He scored over 402 three-point shots this year alone, more than any other basket player in history, beating his own previous record. <laughs> the Golden State Warriors broke the NBA record for a season by winning 70, 73 games in 2016. <laughs> he represents Under Armour, who provides apparel for the sports world. Now, this is very interesting because what they ask him to do, knowing his relationship with God, they ask him, don't say anything about Jesus Christ. But Steph is cool. Isn't he cool? Isn't he? Somebody ought to say he's cool. He's cool. So Curry One, which is one of his shoes, has 413 printed on the tongue of the shoe. Imprinted from Philippians 413, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And on his shoes, though, instead of just having 413, he chooses to write the words himself. It is his way of telling God and reminding himself in every game, not just some games, but in every game, the God that I serve is the source of my success and my prosperity. So, my friends, if we really want to destroy the walls of defeat and celebrate the, the true and lasting success that God has ordained for us, we first and foremost must know God and consistently honor God. Number two, we got to know who we're up against. We got to know who we're up against. I want to say it again. You got to know who you're up against. Sometimes we, we treat it as a what, but it's, it's generally not a what. More often than not, it is a who we're up, a, up against. Remember that walls are always built by people. Man. People are not going to like you. Can, can I encourage you to get over it? Act like you don't know they don't like you. Treat them well. Smile at them. Give them a hug. Are you staying with me? Back in the day, I sang with a gospel group. You all may remember the Crawford Singers. Uh, yeah, I sang with them. We, we thought we were the bomb back then. Boy, I tell you. After auditioning, we were the only gospel singers selected to sing in a pageant of gifted but worldly singers. We were the only, we were the only ones. On one occasion, I met Muhammad Ali. You know, he recently passed on the third day of June. He was known as the greatest sportsman of all times. He had recently converted to Islam, and somehow we began to discuss the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. And I guess somewhere along the way, I kind of got the best of him. Because after a while, Muhammad Ali jumped up and he slapped me. Yeah. Now, it wasn't hard. It was just, it was just a tap. But this is what he said. You want a box? Hey, you want a box? Now, as much as I love Jesus, I wasn't crazy. Okay? I was not going to box Muhammad Ali. I could beat him talking about Jesus versus Muhammad, but I could not beat him at boxing. And furthermore, I realized, though he was physically there, Muhammad Ali was never the enemy. You understand what I'm saying? He was never the enemy. Muhammad Ali was a good man. He was a nice man who had been hurt by people and the issues of life and was being now really used by the enemy. He had to work himself through that and I was not going to make it worse. Are you staying with me? By humiliating him after he slapped me, I'm done. Are you hearing me right now? I am, I'm done. We always have to remember the devil really has no authority in the earth. We always have to remember that he is, always will be, uh, and, and he will always be the devil. Come on, are you with me? He will always be the devil. 
He will always be the devil. Now, you can act like you don't, I don't, I don't believe in the devil. I don't care whether you believe in the devil or not. You know you have a dark spirit every now and then. You know there's an evil spirit that rises up in you, and you don't know where it came from, and you said you would never act like that again. But something happens when you find yourself drifting from God. You find yourself getting closer to something that's not like God. You may not be with Christ, but whether you admit it or not, you're with the Antichrist. There is a dark spirit that wants to kill us from the inside out, and you you and I are not exempt. But he has no authority. Unless we allow him to do what he chooses to do. People that are sinful and weak and damaged and insecure and hateful and fearful are used by Satan to build walls that are designed to hinder the forward progress of the believer. That's why since I've been saved, I've been very careful and prayerful in choosing those I align myself with. Sometimes maybe I'm a little too careful, a little too prayerful. I got to do a better job at that. But, but watch this. There are a lot of people I went to school with I couldn't hang with. I know I'm helping somebody here today. A whole lot of folks I really did like, but they were messing me up. Are you listening to me? There are a lot of people that I would work with, but I couldn't hang with. There are a lot of people that, watch this, I went to church with, but I couldn't hang with. Maybe you know who I'm talking. Amen. There are a lot of people that act one way in church, but when church is over, they act a totally different way. Amen. There are a lot of folks, man, I'm telling you right here, they'll sing with the choir and clap and preach. And when church is over, you get in the car, they're listening to everything and will hand you a blunt. Not only do we have to study and know God, we have to also study and know people. Remember, some folks have been assigned by the spirit of darkness to subtract you and divide you. Some folks come to church. They didn't come here to get saved. But I'm glad you're here because you will. See, you will get saved if you keep coming here. In John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71, John 6, verses 70 and 71, 71, Jesus answered them. This is what he says. Have I not chosen you 12? That's what he's saying to the disciples. Have I not chosen you 12? And one of you is a devil. That's pretty tough coming from Jesus, isn't it? One of you is a, is a devil. I can see him now starting to look around and think, which one of us? <laughs> but he spoke of Judas, Judas Iscariot, the, the son of Simon, for he, it is he who would betray him, the Bible says, being one of the twelve. You got to know who the devil has assigned to build the walls and sustain the walls that stand between you and the victory that God has ordained for you. Some folks will help you. Other folks will hurt you. But you have to know the difference. You have to know the difference. Now, sometimes you can't avoid the people that are going to hurt you. You just have to understand they're here to hurt me. Now, I'm not going to hurt them back. I'm going to love. Are you all staying with me? I, listen, listen, very quickly. I'm going to just stop here just for a moment because I'm talking to some folks at times who are really mean. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying that you don't love Jesus and Jesus doesn't love you. I'm just saying every now and then you all are some mean folks. I can say smile, and some of you might decide, I ain't smiling. I don't care who tell me to. What's going through your head, and why is it going through your head? Turn to somebody and say, every now and then, I'm a little mean. Yeah. Not all the time, just every now and then. Something rises up in me. I don't know where it comes from. It's not what I want to do. It's not what I plan to do. It just comes out of me every now and then. Please pray for me because I'm a little, a little mean. I'm a little mean. I got to know the word of God. I got to know what God expects of me. And I got to pray and talk to God. How am I going to get there? In Luke chapter 14, verse 31, Jesus posed this question. Luke 13, 30, 14, 31, Luke 14, 31, he says, what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? What sense does it make to have 10,000 men fighting 20 and you don't have a God-ordained plan? Brothers and sisters, don't ever forget, spiritually, there's a war going on. Jesus tells us to consider the source and the force before setting the course. 
And so we can, we can celebrate when we know God and honor God. When we, number two, we can celebrate when we know who we're up against. Number three, uh, we can celebrate when you know who you can count on. When you know who you can count on. All right? Amen. Are you staying with me? I got to know who I can count on. Amen. If you need, if you need $100, you got to know who you can count on. There's no, no point in asking somebody to loan you $100 and all they got is 10 Amen. I don't know who I can count on. In, in Joshua chapter 2, I'm, I'm heading towards Joshua. In Joshua chapter 2, the servant of God sent spies to survey the, the strength of the enemy standing between Israel and the promised land. He says, go see what we're going to be up against. The spies are informed by a harlot by the name of Rahab that their victory is secure. Joshua chapter 2, verse 9. She said unto the man, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She says, I'm going to tell you exactly like it is. We know you're coming and we're scared to death. We have heard, verse 10, uh, Joshua chapter 2, we have heard, verse that we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you and how you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites and, and were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, where they were utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. You can't get away from God. Stop trying to act like other folks. Those folks aren't real. Study the people on reality television. What they're showing you is not their reality. But when you examine their reality, you find out they're in worse shape than you are. All these artists coming out with these heartbreak hotel songs based on their heartbreak. Oh, let me let me let that go. Isn't it amazing? Listen, Mother Gwen and I just celebrated 42 years of marriage. Isn't it amazing? It's hard to find that. It's hard to find peace. I'm gonna climb with you in a minute, man. Folks gotta fly to France in a weekend trying to have some fun. Go make you believe I got 12 cars. And, and 32 rooms. I want you to see my house, how well furnished it is. But wait a minute, there's nobody in it. I just thought I'd throw that your way there, you know. Joshua and Israel were able to go and take Jericho because they knew the weakness of who they were up against and the strength of God who they could count on, who was clearly on their side. Turn to somebody and say, God is on my side. Turn to somebody and say, I can count on God. He had assigned Rahab as the source of their encouragement. Likewise, if we're going to destroy the walls of defeat, we too have to know who we're up against and we've got to know who's on our side. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we all need a coach. I know you, I know you know who you are, you know what you know, but you need a coach, you need a mentor, you need an accountability partner, someone that will enhance your life naturally and spiritually, somebody that's going to tell you what you don't want to hear when you need to hear it. Amen. Sometimes they can get on your last nerve. Am I messing with somebody here today? Sometimes. I get on your last nerve, don't I? But when you mess up, don't I love you anyway? I never mentioned that you messed up. I just help you get up. I pat you up. I hold you. I console you through the word of God. And I say, let's try it all over again. Some of you I have picked up 10, 12 times. Somebody in this house ought to say, amen. I have been there for you when nobody else was, there, was with you. I never reminded you how messed up you are. Hallelujah. Because I realize every now and then I'm a little messed up too. <laughs> Glory to God. There's a term called psychoneuroduplication. Psychoneuroduplication. 
It was presented by Marshall Silver. Now, there are principles you need to follow, and if you look it up online, you'll see them. You gotta follow them daily, but the process is fairly simple. You look for someone that is successful, and you do what they're doing. When you think thoughts like their thoughts, and take action like they take action, you ultimately prosper like they prosper. It's called psychoneuroduplication. Now, even though psychoneuroduplication is not a biblical term, it is a biblical practice. I'm, can I help you with this very quick? And I'm going to get on out of here. Everything you get from the world, the world may or may not know, but they got it from God. So why don't you just bypass the world and go straight to God? I'm helping somebody here. Now, you can go buy stuff in the store if you want to. But more than likely, if you bypass the middleman and go straight to the Internet where they got this huge warehouse where they'll just send it to you and, and the middleman doesn't have to get a cut of your stuff. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you. Psychoneuroduplication is a biblical practice. In Psalm 37, 37. Are you all right? Because I'm not just here to make you feel good for an hour and a half. I want you to get this and apply it so that you can live and grow and glow. Yeah. Psalm 37, 37, David writes, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Man, I, I, I want peace. He says, look for a man who is righteous towards God or woman and duplicate him or her or do what he or she does. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm, I got to get out of here. You don't want, let me just say, the only thing you can do with a man who won't wear a belt his, and you can see his underwear is help him understand he needs to pull up his pants. <laughs> Lovingly. Lovingly, because he may not have had anyone to teach him that earlier. And so you have to say, honey, pull up your pants. Fella, pull up your pants. Sometimes I just stop on the street. Man, listen, your underwear showing. That guy's coming here with big old picks hanging out of their heads. They'll tell you, hey, man, you know, you forgot to take that pick out your head. Oh, BG. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Paul says, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 4, 9. Paul says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Paul says, I need you to practice this psychoneuroduplication from a biblical standpoint. What you see me do, you do, and you will experience success. Spiritually, psychoneuroduplication is when you trust God to send you to someone that is spiritually successful. Amen. When you think thoughts like they think thoughts and you take action like they take action, you will prosper like they will prosper. That's why those of you that are prosperous can never try to hold it to yourself. You understand what I mean? You got to give it. You got to understand. I got this vertical relationship with God. So everything that I am, everything that I've gotten, I've gotten it from God. But the purpose of getting it from God is so that I can have a horizontal relationship. Somebody's got to get what I've got. Otherwise, I'm going to die and I'm going to be the only one that knows what God has given me to give to somebody else. And so, and so watch this, watch this. In essence, when God called Joshua to lead the children of Israel, he used a formula very similar to the psychoneuroduplication. When he said in Joshua chapter 1, listen to what he says in Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of God, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. I'm going to share this with you. You'll never really know what type of leader you are until you're gone. Who operates in your place once you're gone? Anybody that knows me, you know I am, I'm an advocate for succession because I understand I'm not going to be here very much longer. That's just the reality of it. But it doesn't matter as long as whoever is here does as good as I do or better, then, we're gonna, then God's going to get glory. Are you with me? I don't know what my family looks like until I'm, till I'm gone. Oh, you all not listening to me. You're not listening. He says, Moses, 
My servant is dead. He's dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I will give to them, even to the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Every place that your soul, that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you, as I said unto Moses. Listen to this, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, to the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man, somebody said, Say, nobody, nobody's going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will not fail you and I will not forsake you. God tells Joshua, I need you to celebrate. For I use Moses to mentor you and to groom you and to prepare you for a time such as this. You are not here accidentally. And so God tells Joshua, think like Moses. Act like Moses would act. And you will prosper the way Moses prospered. And so we must know God and honor God. We must know who we're up against and know who's on our side. And this is where it really gets good. But when we spend quality time with God, I'm not talking about every now and then. I'm talking about some quality time with God. I'm talking about talking to God when you could just be listening to the radio. I'm talking about talking to God when you could be watching the internet or looking at your iPhone. I'm saying spend some quality time with God. Turn your stuff off and say, God, God, I need to talk to you. And I know there are a lot of distractions and they're trying to pull me out of fellowship with you. But for you, I will live and for you, I will die. My God, I got to have my time with you. And when we do that, we can celebrate what we can do through God before we even do it. We celebrate what we can do through God before we even do it. For many of you here, we had a picture of this church on a bulletin for years. It was on our web page for years. We've worked and planned and prayed for 20 years, but, but it was before you 20 years, and we celebrated for 20 plus years what God was going to do. You all are not listening to me. When we would go to hotels and they would pull up our webpage, they didn't pull up the South Campus. They pulled up this campus. They never knew it wasn't here yet. It didn't matter if it wasn't here yet. I knew it was coming. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. You celebrate what you can do through God before you do it. I know this. I know this, but indulge me. And I know you know it. But allow me to remind you that when it comes to the destroying the walls of defeat, our partnership with God makes the difference. I am trying to help you. Our knowledge is minimal, but he's omniscient. He knows all things. Our movement is restricted, but he's omnipresent. He's in all places at the same time. Our power is limited, but he's omnipotent. He has all power. I wish I could get you to believe like I believe. Our finances are inadequate, but God's resources are more than enough. Our influence is partial, but God's influence has no limits. In and of ourselves, we can only see with our natural eyes. But when we partner with God, we walk by faith. I'm talking to somebody right here. You're in school and it's not looking so good, but you walk by faith. I'm talking to somebody here. You've seen a house and God told you that's your house. You can't figure out how you're going to get it, but you're walking by faith. And you're not walking by sight. The doctor gave you a report, said that you're not going to get better. You're only going to get worse. But I'm telling you right now, the devil's been talking to the doctor because he's a liar. I'm going to be healed and I'm going to do and I'm going to proclaim the glory of God for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in hell until God delivers me. Somebody shall glory the Bible tells us let me wrap it up in Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 the Bible says now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel none went out and none came in they had locked the city down the city could not be penetrated they had built it that way but God the Lord said unto Joshua, you got to get this, Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. The Lord said unto Joshua, see, 
I just got to stop there for a moment. Because Joshua's on the other side of this wall, of this city that cannot be penetrated. And God says unto him, see, man, not with your natural eyes. I need you to see by faith. I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Can you see it? I don't know what you've been praying for, but if you've been studying and talking to God, can you see the thing that God has put in your heart that is going to come to pass? You're not just guessing. You're not just wondering. God says, I have blessed you with success. See. Hallelujah. Some of you are beginning to see right now. See. Joshua chapter 6 verse 10 the Bible tells us and Joshua commanded the people saying ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout when I say shout you shout for six days the people didn't talk but rather they marched around the wall of Jericho once a day somebody say six days just think about who you are in God and who God is in you for six days on day seven they were still silent as they marched around the wall seven times in essence they were told to be still be still listen my friends like Israel in silence we're able to humble ourselves and and pray listen to me I'm gonna tell you right now when you're in silence you don't have to impress me and I'm here to tell you, I don't have to impress you either. When we're in, we're in silence. It's just, it's just me and, and God. At, at times we, we hate silence. Because in silence, our souls are restored. See, in silence, I have to admit, God, I stand before you. And you know I've got some problems. Other folks, I'm not letting them know. I'm not letting them in. But, but I'm too introverted. I, I stick by myself too much. I, I talk too much. I'm too extroverted. I'm in too many folks. When I'm, when I'm in... When I'm in, when I'm in silence. When I'm in, when I'm in silence. Why says I'm able to hear what the Lord has to say. When I'm, when I'm, it's just me and the Lord. In silence, not only do we see our sin, our pain, and our shame, but we also see God's mercy and God's grace and God's favor. I'm, I'm talking to somebody in here. I don't know, have you ever spent that kind of time with God? Stop thinking so much. In most cases, we celebrate based on, the, based on the sight principle. We celebrate after the victory. But the celebration of believers is based on the faith principle. The faith principle is to celebrate what God is going to do before he does it. Notice in our text, Joshua gives the commandment. And Israel by faith shouts before they see the victory, not after the victory. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, And it came to pass at the seventh time. When the priest blew the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! You all have drank all the Hennessy that you can hold. You've smoked all the blunts and snorted all the coke your body can take. I am telling you right now while you're in a clean state. Or maybe you came in here messed up. I don't know where you are. But I am telling you right now, shout your way out of your situation. Shout your way out of your pain. Shout your way out of your shame. God did not bring you this far to leave you now. When the priest, priest blew the trumpets and the people shouted with a great shout. The Bible says the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him and he and they took the city. Get ready to shout your way out. You're not trying to impress anybody because they're not helping you. Get ready to take the city. 
if you have studied and prayed and you partially know the heart of God you know who you're up against and you know God is on your side then brothers and sisters get ready to shout by faith shout by faith shout shout for your healing shout for your deliverance shout for your joy shout for your peace shout for your sanity shout for your prosperity shout all over this house shout if it wasn't for God on my side I wouldn't have made a shout 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 hallelujah We're so glad you tuned in and may God richly bless you. The Love Corner. And if you want to know more about the Love Corner experience, call us at 217-359-6920 and on the World Wide Web at www.thechurchofthelivinggod.com.